before I share my written comments tonight, I want to take this opportunity to introduce three individuals who came here with me from the North Country, Battle Creek, Michigan. <laughs> First, uh, from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation is Dr. Terry Wright, who is a programming officer uh, specializing in health care at the foundation. Terry, where are you? Okay, beautiful. <clears throat> and, 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 and also my partner from Battle Creek for the past 42 years, my wife, Clara Stewart. And, and coming in from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to join us tonight and share this evening is our daughter, Kendra Stewart. Kendra. Now, that, that may seem a little odd to introduce your wife and family at an occasion like this, but uh, if you'll just bear with me, I'm working on brownie points both at home and the office, <laughs> and, and, and I appreciate your support. <laughs> Okay, in, in beginning, let me just uh, say it is indeed my pleasure to serve as the co-chair of this event with uh, Jim Walton, the president of CNN uh, Worldwide, and also Ms. Jane Fonda. Uh, these individuals have been strong voices in the community for a long time, so it, it's my pleasure uh, to be here and to participate in this. For those of you who may not be very familiar with the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, let me just say a little thing about our grant-making strategy. Our approach to grant-making is to use our resources to help people help themselves. And behind this very, very simple strategy is our belief that in order to achieve systemic and sustainable change in the overall well-being of vulnerable people in our nation, particularly our vulnerable children, that we must have articulate people in the community who can speak up both inside and outside about the need and the justification for us as a nation to do more about those people who are living on the edge of desperation in our society. And with this very brief background, I will share with you that uh, almost 10 years ago now, our foundation, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, uh, made several uh, meaningful grants to people around the country in an effort to help strengthen community voices. One such investment was to support the establishment of the Community Voices Initiative at the Morehouse School of Medicine Center on Primary Care. And I can tell you, standing here tonight, that we did that not only because we recognize what a great institution Mohouse is and the kind of engagement it has had historically in the community, but it was a show of our confidence in the vision, the determination, and the leadership of the distinguished Dr. Henri Treadwell. So tonight, I stand here and I say before you that we at the Kellogg Foundation are indeed pleased with the investment that we've made in Mohouse and the confidence we had and continue to have in Dr. Treadwell, because we can see. <laughs> because we can see as we intended that we are in fact helping people help themselves. We can strongly, we can see strongly that community voices here are having a direct result on our, on the need in this country to have stronger voices. At this important, as this important work continues, I also want to take this opportunity to say, as this work is expanded, it is in need of additional support and involvement from a larger number of funders. And we want to encourage everyone who might consider this as a part of their vision and mission in this country to jump in there and participate in expanding this work. I saw earlier Dr. David Satcher. David, are you? Dr. David Satcher. Uh, I've known uh, Dr. Satcher and another person I've worked with for years in medical education for South African blacks that's the main part of this community, Dr. Lewis Sullivan, who is president of Mohouse. Early on, we work with these people because they have, in fact, built quite a legacy of support for community voices. 
And so I want to say to you guys that we in Battle Creek as philanthropists feel rather fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with strong people like you have been in the community. And to you, Dr. Maupin, we want to say to you that we look forward to your present and continuing support in connecting the Mohouse legacy to an even stronger future as we continue to work with you and the Community Voices initiative to continue to build strong voices in this nation to reach out to the vulnerable people in our communities. And I want to say in closing that I made a very firm commitment to Dr. Treadwell that I would keep my comments brief tonight, as a matter of fact, under three minutes. So I'm, I'm not sure that I have kept that commitment, but I, I am sure that if I would pass up the opportunity to make some comments to and about Ms. Soledad O'Brien, that I would never forgive myself. So I will make some brief comments now. Uh, first on the light side, Soledad, uh, for more than 20 years, I had the great pleasure of being a corporate officer at Kellogg Company in Battle Creek. And during those 20 years, I ran around the world with a very famous tiger by the name of Tony the Tiger. <laughs> and I just want to say to you, uh, having seen you and seen your work, that if Tony would ever have the opportunity to be in your company, I can assure you that he's probably going to say something like, you're great. <laughs> yeah. Having having messed up Tony's voice, <laughs> I will I will humbly go back to my serious comments for tonight, and um, I ask you, Soledad, to please accept our most sincere thanks for the kind of work that you're doing and the strong voice that you are in the community. And all of last week, so many of us in America saw you in action as you did your special report on the assassination of Dr. King. And, and while it was so obvious that you were teaching the nation a lesson that many of us, particularly young people, were not in connection with, and so you did this country a great, great service with that special. But I want to say to you that I think more people in America are looking forth with great anticipation, great anticipation for your coming special on July 11th, a conversation on race. And, and I think you are on to something big. And remember, I said that to you tonight. I think you are on to something big in this country. I think the time has come. I appreciate so much that you have the vision and the courage to bring this nation to a conversation on race. So we appreciate you so very much. And I will close my comments by saying to you the same thing that Tony would say, but not in his voice. I just want to say to you, I think you're great.